Father in heaven, what a blessing it is to consider the gospel, the gospel that you have given to us. And then for those who know Christ, they stand in that gospel. We stand in confidence, not in what we have done, but in what you have done for us. Oh, Lord God, I pray that as we remember your son now, you would grant us your grace to do that well. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, well, now is the time in our service where we do remember Christ. We remember Christ for who he is and what he did for Christians in their place at the cross. Uh, this is a time for Christians to remember Christ and what he did at the cross for them. Uh, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to be taking a wafer and a bit of juice. And it's important for us to remember that these are symbols. Uh, these are symbols of the body of Christ that suffered the wrath of God in place of those who would believe and the blood of Christ that washed those same people clean from their sin. It's important that we remember Christ rightly. And so today we're going to be looking at a passage that remembers and notices the preeminence of Christ. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to John chapter 3? We're going to be looking at verses 31 and 32 together. And if you don't actually have a Bible, there are some men coming down the aisles. Just lift your hand up and they can get a Bible to you. Uh, our passage today is on page 955. And if you don't actually own a Bible, uh, please consider this our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. Well, our verses this morning sit in a passage that's about John the Baptist. This is the same one that Ben read about just a few minutes ago. Uh, John the Baptist was the forerunner for Christ. He is the one who was preparing the way for Christ. He is the one who was to get the people ready to receive the message of Christ. And John had a ministry, and he was a successful ministry because he was faithful in that ministry. But he began to accrue many followers to this. So if you notice in verse 22... Uh, Jesus actually is in the same area. He's ministering in the same area as John, and he's preaching and he's baptizing. In verse 26, John's disciples come to John with a complaint, and that is that Jesus is acquiring followers. And they're concerned that John is going to lose his preeminence to Jesus. And we all know John's famous response to that. It's in verse 30. He must increase and I must decrease as we look at our passage in verses 31 and 32, we're going to see why it is that Jesus must increase and John the Baptist must decrease. So as I read, just take notice of the things that are mentioned about Jesus in those two verses, and we'll begin to talk about them as we remember Christ today. John 3, 31 and 32. He who comes from above is above all, and he who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and what he has heard, he bears witness, and no one receives his witness. Two things in this passage are going to help us understand the preeminence of Christ. And the first is that Jesus is from above. John the Baptist says in verse 31, he who comes from above. Jesus had his origin. He had his source from the Father in heaven. That's where he came from. And John is making a contrast between Jesus and where he is from and everybody else when he says, he who is of the earth. He's contrasting Jesus with everybody else. And he says, everybody else who is of the earth is actually from the earth. And we speak from the earth. We speak as such. Jesus alone can speak from above because Jesus alone is from above. And then John goes out and he says, Jesus, the one who comes from above is above all. So he's helping us understand the preeminence that Jesus has as a person above all other people. Any earthly messenger of which John was the best is insignificant when compared to Christ. So Jesus is preeminent and he deserves to be Lord because he came from above. That's the message in verse 31. And the message in verse 32 has to do with Jesus' message. And Jesus here is going to be seen as something that he has a message that's very different in its origin as well. So in verse 32, what he has seen and what he has heard, what this helps us understand is that Jesus saw and he heard the message, the message that he brought from the Father in heaven. Jesus actually related the message that he received firsthand from the Father in heaven before he came to this earth. So Jesus' words were to be taken as authoritative because he received them from the Father. 
He received them in a way that was different from the way that anybody else had received any message before. Jesus himself was actually in the presence of the Father. It's important for us to understand when we read this that there was no New Testament revelation at this time. There weren't any gospel witnesses yet that had been written. There was no letters, there was no epistles, there was no revelation, there was nothing. Jesus' words were to be taken as authoritative above the words of anybody else because he received them personally firsthand from the Father. So Jesus is preeminent not only because he was from above, but his message was from above as well. We ask ourselves this morning, well, what is that message? If you drop down in your, your Bibles to verse 36, you can see the message. The message is very clear, and that is that God is the one who forgives, the one who believes in Christ, and they will be forgiven, and they actually possess eternal life. That's the message. And you understand what it is to believe in Christ when you go backwards in your, your message and your passage and you look up to verse 17. Verse 17 tells us that God did not send his son into this world to judge the world. But he sent his son into this world so that the world could be saved through him. So Jesus' message was that I myself am the one who will save you. I will save you from your sin. And the one who believes that message is the one who possesses eternal life. So this morning, believer, I would really encourage you to take a look as the elements come to you to hold them and consider Christ and who he was. Consider his origin, where he came from above, and consider his message, the message that actually saved you, that started with him. Ponder those things and, and how it is that, that Christ himself went to a cross, and in your place he received in his own body the wrath of God against your sin. And in doing so, he reconciled you to God. And then when your heart is ready, uh, take the elements on your own. If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ, if you're not a follower of Christ, we just looked at verse 36 of chapter 3, where it says that he who believes in the Son has eternal life. It's important that you see the back half of that verse. That, that verse says that he who does not believe, the wrath of God remains on him. It abides on him. It's resting on him. The good news is you can turn to Christ in salvation and faith today and avoid the judgment that is waiting for you. There will be people after the service over here to my right, to your left. They would love to talk with you about the gospel and what it means to know Christ and how Christ can set you free from the penalty of your sin. But for now, when the elements come to you, if you're an unbeliever, just take them and pass them to the person next to you. So the men are going to come and pass out the elements, and I will close our time in prayer in just a minute.